So how come you didn't decide to take up law given the environment in which you probably grew up? I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I presume that, you know, I, I mean, uh, I, I think this happened as a matter of normal this thing. Maybe my father also felt that the lawyer initial struggle was huge, so and therefore he didn't want us to go through that particular struggle. But uh, some of these things, uh, you know, happen also by chance that, you know, we all children became engineers and so on and so forth. So, but this this did happen to me. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it, some, some of them never encouraged us to become lawyers or, we, you know, we, we felt, we probably felt it was a safer environment to do that. Yeah, I'm sure, you know, it, it was quite a lonely existence during that period, you know, he, you know the judges, uh, he was isolated, he was not called and all that sort of thing. But there was never, never any, you know, visual expression or anything of that nature. He was, he knew what he had to do, therefore, because it was purely an internal thing which he internalized, but didn't speak much about it. No. no. But he would bring back work home. Well, the work was obviously... Not. But work was never discussed over dinner table conversations mm. or... There, 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 the work was by and large not, not at all. It's just a, no, so it's a point of fact that you know, by the time I became 16, I left my house. So, you know, I, I hardly spent any time with him because you know, I had to study at night in Madras and then after that I was working. So therefore, I, I was never... Uh, you know, this thing, there were minor mention here and there, but he would bring work home worked till late in the evening, but there was not much of, uh, you know, personalities that were discussed or so on and so forth. So none of those things would happen, yes. And also I think uh, the fact is that, you know, if he discussed it with us, we may have a particular viewpoint that might influence him or vice versa, so therefore it was it was a closed chapter. So yes, clear, that's, yeah. that's, there was clear demarcation on that. Yeah. So I, I, I'm sure that he would, he would discuss it with my mother, but uh, you know, he, the children reluctant to do so. They look, they may have a particular viewpoint and so on and so forth. So he, he, was, he was not 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 open to talking to us on professional matters. Otherwise, yes, anything else. Go good for the weaker person. I, I think that was it. Uh, you know that. So he was a man of very simple tastes. Very simple tastes, yes. No, uh, I mean, uh, very simple tastes, yes, that's right. You know, every time, let's say, he came to a factory, he would be very happy here, he would do that. But uh, like any other person, his first concern was he would always want to give me some money. <laughs> and uh, the money was not for me, the money was for the workers. So he had those sort of values that would let me look after the workers. So he would, he would come, he'd be very happy to see the you know, factories grow, and he'd do that. And in no one small way, he would like to see that, you know, he could do for whatever he could to contribute to them. Never for the business, but let's say, let's, will you please buy sweets for all your workers and things like that. Uh, then, yes, I think a simple person, he would write various sort of things. He's fond of wild life, extremely fond of tigers, and would be willing to go anywhere to see a tiger. Okay. So, and he, he wrote three or four articles. Of, I still remember, you know, when he wrote an article, a uh, date with a tiger. So, he was extremely yes. fond of the tiger. Line. So, that was it. So, as a family, there were a lot of holidays that were That's spent absolutely. together. Absolutely. I mean, that, that was a time really because, you know, I've, for example, till I was studying, first 20 years of my life, two, two, this was one of the advantages of legal profession that you would go and spend two months in Dalhousie every every state. Fortunately, my grandfather built a large house and said for all of us, including my cousins, everybody would land up in Dalhousie and therefore that was that was the time that we would really get together. So, uh, the holidays were, uh, summer holidays were something we all looked forward to as long as we were studying. After that, it was not possible for us to do that. But I, I managed to, the last uh, 10 years of his life, I would make sure that I take 10 days off from my work and spend 10 days with him in Lhasi. So that was the time he would really look forward to. Um, he was very fond of walks. Uh, 
every morning he must go for his morning walk. I think he, till the age of 90, he was walking about five to six kilometers a day every morning. So therefore, in Dalhousie, he would do that. If there was no question, uh, you know, uh, he would uh, not take a car or something like that to get to a level road. He walked the entire distance himself and do that. It's very simple, very simple. A very simple, honest, clear about his values and so on and so forth. Incorruptible, absolutely. Did he spend time with you in Madras? He would come here for short durations, that's all, uh, you know, uh, one week, ten days, sometimes, of work and so on and so forth. But uh, no, he didn't spend a long time with this. Uh, but he, he wanted to meet people, it is not that he would come here, meet lots of people. So, but, uh, most of this time, we fought it was in Delhi, that, uh, that's right. I think all those things, whatever he had, the issues and this thing would be dominant to discuss with my mother. His support system. That's it. And his sisters also he would share with them and then, you know, that this has happened, that has happened and so on. It was so a very, very close-knit. It was very close -knit. And a large family. Very large family. Yes, that's right. They, they were three brothers and six sisters, so they were, that was it. And uh, he would do that. But I, I think the reluctance was predominantly because he did not want to get influenced by anybody and therefore it was only in that small circle he would do that. Because uh, when you're in that position there would be an effort to say, listen, you know, you become close to a person and that person would say, look, can you do something or can you not do something? That's the time to completely shut down. He was never, because I guess the reputation precedes you, so therefore, the moment you moved in, people knew that look, you, he was not so, it was not many, many efforts at all to ever influence him. Uh, I, I, I remember something which, when he was a district concession judge, there was a particular judgment where he knew one of the parties was closely related to a judge of the Supreme Court of India. And uh, he knew that there was going to be enough pressure put on to him. And uh, the judge did phone him up and said, I believe this particular case has come up in you know, some Supreme Court. And for a small person, you know, an ambitious person, that would have been important. My father knew this was coming and he said, look, I volunteered to the judgment and that person never asked him anything after that. So, but that normally people, you know, I guess if you're, you've got a rep reputation of being honest, nobody ever tries to influence you. Know, and nobody will ever approach you. So th that way he was completely his own man. Do you have any memories of uh, contemporaries who worked along with your father? Maybe Nani Palkiwala or, or... Okay, no, Nani Palkiwala and he became very close. I mean, you know, this obviously happened after he retired. And uh, he and Nani Palkiwala... Uh, you know, whenever he used to go to Bombay, Nalini Palkiwala would make sure that one evening, he was uh, he was uh, on the board of Press Trust of India, and uh, if Nani Palkiwala would make sure that one evening he would always call him for dinner and then they would uh, discuss various things and so on. And therefore he was very close to Nani Palkiwala. He was also extremely close to Soli Sorati. Soli would, and his wife would come around and meet him very often. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I think they were extremely close personally also. They were very different people, but very, very close. Uh, I recently met uh, one of the editors of Hindu, and uh, he mentioned to me that because he was on the best test of India, he said, your father was always never bothered about, uh, you know, he would always ask, is it the right thing to do? And he said, I, I can go to instances in where he said, uh, look, uh, he, he held his view quite. He said one was in the agreement we as Press of India had uh, a dispute with uh, Reuters, if I'm right. And uh, so the entire board felt that look, we should uh, sue Reuters or something. Like that. The father said, look, what was the original intention of the agreement? And uh, then we called the concerned person and that person said, this was the original 
intention of the agreement and forget the legal things. He says, look, if this was the original intention, let us do that. And he says the entire board then agreed with him and so on. And there was another instance where there was a question of the provident fund as far as workmen were concerned. The entire board felt that we should, you know, pursue the matter legally. And my father said, look, what is there? It's a small sum of money and it's, it, 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 it's, it's blocks the workers. And he says, again, the board concurred. So he, he said he was never for what was what was technically right, but what was what was morally right. In both these cases, he said the, the press trust of India saw his viewpoint and uh, did what he wanted us to do.